My name is Christopher Honsap from Group 5. Let me introduce my group member, Mr. Sandah Panteng, uh, Steward Arjun Franky, and Mr. Wee Chun Chen. So, I will present the environmental impact assessment for Kampung Hulu Kabong project. For your information, I am one of the consultants from this project. So, I will uh, explain your uh, project description. This project work involves uh, site clearing and off work, drainage work, rock work, water reticulation work, and piling work. For your information, these all activities will impact to the, our environment. <clears throat> the total for these projects are almost 22 million. So the contract particular is the contract commencement date uh, 29 August 2019. The original completion date is uh, 28 February 2021. But we have the EOT estimated completion date until 15 December 2021. <clears throat> so for your information, this project carried out an uh, uh, environmental monitoring report to submit to the NREB, National, report, National Resource Environmental Board. This report will submit for every three months. I will show you the project map, map of... I will show you the project location. So this is the project location, the red color. Is uh, near with the Sungai Sebla. So I will pass uh, this present to my court, to my friend, uh, Mr. Wee Chun Jen. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Wee Chun Jen. From my friend explanation just now, we talk about the environment uh, monitoring report. One of the one of them. We are doing the uh, water quality monitoring. Let me uh, share a bit about our water, water quality monitoring on this project. In this project, we have three points for water collection point. As you can see on this map, that uh, mark WM1, WM2, and WM3. Okay. So, uh, for next slide is the water quality monitoring form. From this form, we can see the location, the coordinate for the collection point, and time and condition of the river. Uh, this uh, data is collected uh, on 1st September 2020. From the result, uh, this EMR result cover from August to October 2020. The water quality in this project site is quarter was within the class 2B of national water quality standard which is cover the biological oxygen demand, BOD, total coliform count, TCC, and PECK coliform count. Uh, next slide saw the example for this water quality. Uh, and next. Next block. And this gun chart saw us the, the result from May to July and August to October 2020. The black dot is the baseline for the national water quality standard. Okay, that's all for water quality. We pass, I pass to my uh, Bro Sanda to explain about the air quality monitoring. Thank you.
Hello, doctor and my fellow friend, my Sandra uh, from group five. So, sekarang saya bercerita berkenaan dengan equity monitoring. Equity monitoring adalah uh, satu poin yang kita ambil di site masa, pada masa itu. Uh, PM concentration at site 15.7 uh, microgram meter cube. Bagaimana dengan new Malaysian ambient air quality standard for P PM? PM is a particular meter. The discussion, the PM concentration recorded within the project site was uh, well below the new ambition air quality standard limit. So, untuk um, pematian bagi noise metering adalah pematian pemantauan bunyi, yaitu um, best dengan result yang telah di, di diambil dari sampel dalam n point di point n 1 kita mendapati uh, nilai yang ada adalah 44.047.650.2 dan 54.50.4 so keputusan secara umumnya kada bunyi adalah kebisingan di sekitar tapak adalah di bawah Uh, 90 dB uh, yang telah ditetapkan oleh DOD. Next slide. <coughs> Untuk saya erosion, so kerja-kerja tapak perlu dielakkan jika hari hujan untuk mengurangkan gangguan pada um, uh, tanah yang lembab akibat mesin atau kerana yang berat di tapak projek. Kerja pada tapak yang lembab akan mengakibatkan hakisan yang cepat pada uh, saya tersebut. So untuk quality uh, management, water quality management, pembuangan sisa-sisa pembinaan ke dalam sungai adalah dilarang. Minyak dan gris perlu diletakkan di dalam bekas anti bocor dan dilebelkan sebagai pembuangan sisa berjadual dan dibuang di kawasan pembuangan yang khusus. So, that's all for my uh, presentation. So, I pass to my friend. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sanda. So, I will continue with my presentation. So, next is uh, traffic and hazard management. So, traffic, temporary traffic signs and warning signage should be properly displayed at strategic location. Maksudnya, perlu adalah uh, sangat perlu untuk menyediakan uh, sementara tra traffic signs yang sementara pada ketika site sedang berjalan. And then untuk waste management, sewage to be produced at the project site should be routed through a septic tank before being discharged into the drainage system. Dan ini sangat penting untuk menyediakan uh, septic tank uh, di tapak bina sebelum uh, air ataupun Uh, sewage bahan buangan daripada site seperti uh, bahan yang berminyak, gris dan sebagainya bahan-bahan kimia itu disalurkan uh, ke sungai ataupun uh, laut-laut yang berdekatan uh, seperti yang kita tahu bahwa site ini berdekatan dengan sungai-sungai dan juga kampung-kampung di uh, sekitar kabong jadi ini sangat penting untuk menyediakan uh, septic tank tersebut untuk mengelakkan uh, pencemaran air untuk penduduk di sekitar Uh, kabong. So next adalah gambar-gambar uh, untuk mengambil kualiti uh, air dan juga uh, water quality di tempat site. Seperti yang kita lihat di gambar yang keempat. Okay, so gambar keempat di situ ada alat untuk mengkaji atau, ataupun untuk menganalisis pencemaran udara yang berlaku di tapak bina. Okay, so So, seterusnya adalah bagaimana untuk minimize the environmental impact. So yang pertama adalah untuk water quality. So yang sangat penting adalah untuk disposing of the construction waste and debris properly. So uh, across most of the advanced and emerging economies, there are strict rules about disposing of the uh, construction waste by now. So 
However, even, even if the site manager follow these regulations, much of the construction waste and debris still end up in industrial landfill with hazardous material risking water safety. Ada sangat penting untuk tata cara yang betul untuk menyelenggara tapak site untuk mengelakkan bahan-bahan buangan ataupun sampah-sampah daripada tapak bina dibuang sesuka hati. And then to air quality, which is the construction dust. So dust production should be appropriately managed with national and organizational regulation best practice and policy. Adherence on site and other dust reductions strategy of site modulus construction practice can be preferable due to lower volume and more controlled dust production. Next is noise monitoring. Construction noise is a major source of noise pollution. Most of this noise is produced by the machinery in sites preparation, demolition, and landscaping. So many construction sites are located near homes and business businesses and can noise complain might be likely. And yes, untuk projek ini banyak komplain daripada warga setempat ataupun penduduk kampung berkenaan dengan noise uh, pencemaran bunyi yang berlaku disebabkan oleh mesin-mesin ketika uh, tapak bina dijalankan. So, <coughs> uh, this is the project overview for this project. So as you can see, uh, there's a, a large area of site Okay, so this is the construction of uh, the premix road, and also as you can see here, there is uh, Christopher, our team members, who's uh, the consultant of this project lah, and with the project signboard. So I think that's all from our group. With that, thank you.